Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Diane and today we're going to be doing a sheet pan dinner complete with dessert. That's right, you heard it. Complete with dessert. So let's get right on through it. So I got some green beans right here that we're going to roast in our sheet pan and I've washed them and now I'm just patting them dry a little bit um, because we're going to put some um, um, olive oil and I like this brand. We're going to put olive oil on them and we're going to put some um, chop some garlic and put garlic and salt and pepper in them. So you want to get your um, oven going and get your oven started at 475. We're going to put it on 475 for 8 minutes and after the 8 minutes is up, set, make sure you set your timer and then we're going to knock it down to 425 and we can continue to cook it for 20 to 25 minutes until everything is completely done. Alrighty. So we're going to go in with our salt. Put a generous amount of salt on it. And then we're going to do some pepper. And we want quite a bit of pepper. If you don't want it or if you want to use something else, that would be fine. And then I have my garlic. We're just going to give that a good smashing on both sides and uh, get them peeled and smashed up real good and we're going to add it and then we're going to give it a good toss and we're going to start layering our um, items in our sheet pan. Um, we're just going to do a rough chop on this garlic. I want it more smushed or smashed um, more than anything else but we're not going to take out any extra tools um, to be doing this today. We just want to get in and out of this kitchen um, Whether you make this meal during the week or on the weekend The key thing is to get out of the kitchen as quick as you can. That's what we want to do and we want minimal cleanup All right So I've got my garlic peeled and now we're just gonna go in and we're gonna just do a rough chop Okay Okay, very good. And then we're just going to scrape all of that over in there. And then we're going to add some olive oil. A good amount because we want to coat this very good. Okay, and we're just going to toss it. Mixing our salt and our pepper and our garlic really good, okay? Make sure you coat all of those green beans. And th these are just the green beans that um, I got them at Walmart. They come in a bag. And I got the small bag, of course, if you got a larger family. Um, of course, you would get a, a larger bag. But um, this does real good for me and Rick. We're going to start and go from end to end. And we're going to layer those green beans right in that pan. Okay, so we're going to create a really nice layer. So, we're going to make sure we have a protein, a non-starchy vegetables, in which I have two today. And then, because I had a sweet potato left over, just one sweet potato, I want to use that up. So, I'm going to be putting my sweet potato um, on this pan as well. So, we're going to use up everything that we got. Okay, next. We're going to do our chicken, and we're having um, barbecue chicken, and if you have watched my videos in the past, you know that I like to create a separation between my meats and the rest of my food, so that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, you can use foil, or you can use, um, again, parchment paper, but I'm using foil today for my meat. These are chicken thighs, and these chicken thighs have been um, marinating in this wonderful barbecue sauce from Stubbs. And this is the spicy that I'm using today. Okay. And we're going to get our chicken thighs laid down. And I'm just using the plastic fork today. Um, I've already did some cleaning up. And so I'm trying to contain as much as possible. And you can just butt this chicken right up close together because 
of course you know when you cook chicken it shrinks so we're just buttoning this right up close together but I did put a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper now when I say spicy this is very spicy so if you're not a spicy girl or spicy man I would just use a regular barbecue sauce that you would just normally use alrighty so we're just gonna try to ensure that this doesn't roll out over on our green beans so we're just gonna make sure we lift it up there pretty good this is gonna make like you know it's own little juice and all of that good stuff we'll just turn this around so I can roll it up really good and get it as close to my chicken as I can make sure you can see it as well all right next what I've got is I've got broccoli and cauliflower and we're gonna salt and pepper these as well so we're gonna go ahead and get that salt it down pepper a good amount of pepper of course you know we love pepper I'm gonna go in with some garlic herb Mrs. Dash and give it a good shake in case stuff has settled we're gonna mix it up really good and give it a good good amount on there we'll put some olive oil on here Toss it around, and these are going to be roasted as well on our sheet pan. Okay, so we're going to give them a nice little um, chopping and chop them up. Okay, that looks really good. It smells really, really divine. All right, now we got our broccoli, and what we're going to do is we're just going to slice our broccoli, our cauliflower. Okay, this is the other half of it. Be careful so you don't cut yourself. Get our pan back here again. We're gonna put our cauliflower down. Then we're going to add in our broccoli. Just, just goes right on top. We want the cauliflower next to the um, bottom of the sheet pan because it's going to take um, a little bit longer to roast um, than say the broccoli would. So we want that a little bit or as close to the bottom as possible. Okay, now so we're going to start the dessert part and I'm going to be doing making like an apple crisp. Something really quick and easy that will cook in the amount of time that I need it to cook in. Um, so we're going to set this to the side and we're going to do our apples. Now normally, normally I would use just a Granny Smith, but I sent my husband shopping. And this is what he came back with. He told me the name of this um, honey crisp. So this is what we're going to use. Um, my mama told you just use what you got. So this is what I got and this is what we're going to use. So we're going to give them a real quick peel here and get them started. Some people just will leave the, the peeling on. Um, I'm not that girl. I'm not going to leave the pillin on, okay? And um, we're just going to go ahead and cut them through in the middle and remove the seeds. And let me tell you, since we're removing seeds and talking about seeds, is I do not buy seedless watermelon. I do not buy seedless anything. Always make sure when I buy some, I buy it and it has the seeds in it. Um, they would tell you that it has not been genetically modified, but how'd you get the seeds out? That's what I want to know. Alright, I'm going to chop it. And let's 
cut this one in half. Let me get it over here so you can see. And I want to show you what size they look like they're going to be. Nice and cubed. That's the size. So I have three of them. I'm going to continue to chop them and peel them and chop them and then we'll be back. So that is the end of our apples. Now these were very large apples. I think I had instructed him to get these medium apples. Since they're very large, I only used two of the apples. Um, now, of course, they're going to um, shrink down, but this meal is just going to be um, a one-day meal. We're not going to be like saving this and having later for another day. So what you're going to do is I've got my apples all nice and chopped, and I'm going to add... Um, anywhere from a half to two-thirds cup of sugar and then you can use the apple pie filling if you like I'm gonna go in pretty I'm gonna go in pretty heavy with ground cinnamon and get a good amount on there and then I have some um, nutmeg I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there and then I have some ground allspice, and we just want to use just a pinch or two of that. I think that these um, really bring out the flavor. So we're going to give them a toss in the sugar. Get that going in there really, really good. Then I have some really ice cold butter. And I'm going to just chop in a couple of hunks of that. Of course, the butter is going to add to the flavor of the dish as well, so it's it's win-win. All right, we're going to give this all a good stir. It smells good. It smells just like apple pie, y'all. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. All right, but you decide what seasonings um you want to put in it. I'm gonna give you a, a look at that. You can see what it looks like. Okay. We're not finished yet. Um, our root powder, powder in it. Now you can use cornstarch, um, or a little bit of flour. But I'm gonna put because wa uh, water is gonna come out of these apples, and I kind of want to make like a little slurry, um, and have it to be a little thick. So hence the arrowroot. Um, I try not to use cornstarch. So I use arrowroot. Arrowroot is supposed to be, and again, we don't know. We've just been told these things. It's supposed to be a little bit better for your digestive tract. So I have been using that. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to set this aside, and then we're going to make the streusel that's going to go on top of this, okay? Okay, guys, so for my streusel, I have about a half a cup of flour, and to that I'm going to add about a fourth a cup a brown sugar <clears throat> and we're going to just mix this together real nice like if you find that you think that you might need um, a little bit more of course you can add more to that and then to that we're going to add about six packs of butter I'm going to get my cutting board again and my nice cold butter and we're going to just eyeball it. And we're going to kind of like add our butter, crumble it all in. And that's going to be our streusel crumble top. Some people use oatmeal. I don't know. I just prefer to use a little brown sugar, flour, and butter. Simple ingredients. I have used oatmeal before. And we just, with our hand, we're just going to start just cutting it in with our hand. You can use a flour, uh, a pastry uh, blender if you want to. But again, we're just doing really quick, easy. We're not trying to have no extra dishes to wash. Okay. So we're just incorporating this in to the flour. Of course, with nice clean hands, we want to get this incorporated in. And you just want to do this until it becomes a little crumbly. We are going to add some more seasonings um, 
to this as well. I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon on to this because we don't, don't want it to taste like flour. We want it to have a seasoned taste to it as well. So I'm going to add just a little bit of cinnamon. Not a whole lot. Just to give it a little, you know, flavor. And it smells good. Okay. And this is just going to start to stick together as we just continue to mix it together. Okay, that looks good. And now if you find that the ratio to flour and brown sugar is not enough, sometimes um, you'll see recipes where people add white sugar as well. I don't do that. But if I find that it's not enough, I, you know, after I take it out of the oven and I taste it, then what I'll, I'll do is I'll just make a, a drizzle with um, confectioner sugar and just plain water. Drizzle some over top of it. Bam. Makes it sweet. It's good. All right, I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to show you the secret to a pan dinner with dessert. All right, so we got our dinner right back in front of us again. Here is my secret. This is just my pan, my little um, loaf pan. It's a small size pan, but this is what I make my um, banana bread in with. That recipe I'll show you one day. Um, bananas, you can see that the um, apples are beginning to render out quite a bit of fluid, liquid yumminess. And we're just going to put that right into our little loaf pan. I'm going to spread that out. I'm going to take my spatula so we can get all the yummy goodness over in there. Mm, that smells so good. All right. It's delicious. And then we're just going to take this and we're just going to crumble it over top of our dessert. Our apple pie. And what I'm doing is I'm actually just take, picking it up and I'm kind of mushing it together in my hand. Okay. We're not going to cover this at all. I'm going to just let this bake in the oven. Those apples are already pretty much soft. Um, so that's not going to take long. If for some reason you find out that your apples, especially if you use Granny Smith. When I use the Granny Smith, I use the smaller um, cutting blade on my chopper. Um, and it makes almost like petite apples. Which, of course, would cook a whole lot uh, quicker. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remember I told you I had a sweet potato. So we got one more thing to add and we have plenty of room. We're going to put our sweet potato here. We're just going to do a quick peel of this sweet potato. All right, so here's my sweet potato. I'm going to chop it in half. <clears throat> we're just going to give it a quick slice down the middle. This is the bigger half, so we will slice it again. And the only thing we're going to do with the sweet potato is we're just going to add some avocado oil to it. Um, you could add cinnamon if you want it, but and we're not going to add sugar. Normally, you know, I do butter and sugar, brown sugar, um, because we have dessert, so we're not trying to do to sweet things in one meal. Okay, I've brought the camera closer so you can see up close and see the loveliness that we have going on here. I have my um, sweet potato. I'm just going to put the sweet potato here. I think we're going to put the big side down. We have plenty of room left. But you see how, let me sprinkle the rest of this um, avocado oil on here. Okay, but you see how this wonderful little pan comes in handy and it just sets on here and you have a full meal. All right, my oven has already beeped, been beeped and I'm going to get this in the oven and get it cooking. When we come back, we're going to show it to you and we'll, it'll be ready to eat. 
Okay, guys, it's all done, and I've taken it out of the oven, and here's what it looks like. I'm going to give you a close-up on it so you can see it really, really good, but everything came out great. I uh, used my thermometer to make sure that my chicken thighs were good and done, and I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of that Stubbs spicy barbecue sauce just to top it off a little bit more barbecue sauce on top, and we're going to talk about our little apple crisp over here. So our broccoli and our cauliflower is nice and tender. Our um, roasted sweet potato came out really good. And then this apple crisp. Oh my goodness. I'm going to dig into it y'all. Mmm. Look at that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm just going to set this in the corner. I'm going to set it right here. Because I'm going to show you up close. I'm going to let that cool so I can taste it. And here we go up nice and close and we can see everything. And this meal will last us for a couple of days. Well, two days. And um, we'll have to cook something else. But let's get close up on this apple strudel. I want you to see. I'm going to actually turn this around. There we go. Up close on that apple strudel or apple crisp. Okay, y'all. So we're going to see if I can taste it. It's like really, really hot still, I believe. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. You don't need to do nothing to that. Those apples are nice and ten tender. They have some nice little syrup down in the bottom of it. That's really good. A full sheet pan dinner with dessert. Y'all, thank you so much for watching. You be blessed, and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.